I was one of the students, like so many students here in American universities, that were, was fooled by this narrative. Until later on, I learned the truth. I learned about what really Israel is, why it is here, and I learned about the danger of those who are hiding under these humanitarian causes and, and nice words to support Hamas. And since then, I've taken on myself the mission to fight against Hamas and against the Muslim Brotherhood. I was successful at times. I always received like death threats from them. And like, this is the story of my life. It's mainly fighting against the Muslim Brotherhood and receiving their backlashes. Until recently, things reached a limit that was very scary for me. Very scary, not only on a personal level, but also on the collective level when the October 7 massacre happened. Before October 7, there was a sense in the region that we are finally over Islamists and over the power of or the influence of Islamists on the general public. People started to speak about Israel in a positive light, speak about reconciliations uh, between different uh, ideologically different countries in the region, uh, normalization with Israel, everything was really heading in the right direction. Until October 7 happened by, by this massacre that they committed, gave a momentum once again to political Islamists and Islamists in general in the region to lead the public opinion. And as the Islamists stepped up to lead, to lead the public opinion, only very few voices in the region had the courage to challenge them. And I was one of these voices, other two in Egypt actually were joining me. All of us are now pushed outside of the country, not because only the threats we received from the Islamists, but also because the Egyptian state and other Arab state decided to side with these Islamists against the liberal voices that are rejecting their narrative. Of course, this has to do with their weakness as dictators, with their econ bad economic performance that they need to compensate for by um, finding another role, like playing as champions of a big cause, champions of the Palestinian cause, and to distract the people from their own problems. But eventually, it only served the extremists. I came here expecting that I left the bad guys behind. But unfortunately, what I found here is that the bad guys are already here. And they, they, they include many of the people I knew from 15 years ago or 20 years ago when I was uh, a student, uh, an undergraduate student. Now they are leading the protests that are happening all over the country. I know they are members of the Muslim Brotherhood, although many of them deny that they are. They even organized the protests in the same manner that they were doing back then, 15 and 20 years ago, the same way of mobilization, the same flags, the same narrative, even the same dependence on Al Jazeera footage and the news stories. It's like a deja vu for me, everything is happening, but in the United States. That's why I'm here today with the hope that we can find a way to prevent what happened to my home country, Egypt, from happening here to the United States. Because for me, the United States embodies all the important values that I've been fighting for all my life, including human rights, women's rights, and democratization. I don't want to see this going away under by any means. So I hope today we can come up with, with an offensive strategy that can help us make this happen before it's too late.